I've been filming top-down style footage for my videos for years now, and you know, I've never been 100% happy with the results. So I've been on a journey to improve the look and feel of that footage. My videos have always been about learning skills and taking you along for the ride, and then we all level up together. And that's what I did. Eight tips for improving your top-down video, and I'll show you how I went from this to this. Let's do it. And if you're new around here, I'm Harv. And I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get straight to the good stuff in these videos. And as ever, I timestamp the whole video so you can just skip the bit you want. But in this case, I would recommend, you know, just grabbing a tasty beverage and sit back and enjoy. Additionally, these videos are not brought to you by any company. It's not sponsored, except for maybe my Patreon backers. And the way that that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy gear and then I do unbiased reviews and then give the gear to my backers. If that's of interest, it's not uh, expensive to be a backer. Do check it out, it's all linked below. Onward. Tip one. Of course, the first thing I want to tweak is to add a more interesting background. Not that the surface of this sideboard necessarily looks bad in my opinion, but I would like it to be more visually striking. It was this sideboard that you were seeing, by the way. Now, what we can do is we can either just, you know, go around and try and find more interesting surfaces just wherever we are, like I did for the thumbnails for each of my Motion VFX M callouts reviews. Alternatively, you can buy flat lays, and I know that's not ideal. I don't love recommending that people buy things on this channel when it's not strictly necessary. But, you know, flat lays, they don't have to be expensive. And, you know, if you shop around, that is, and I can pop some links down below if that would help. But also, I think they are a very good investment if you do this kind of photography and videography regularly. Just be sure to measure up before you buy anything and just be on the lookout for companies that are selling these overpriced versions because there are quite a lot out there. I got this set with eight different surfaces from Amazon for around £24. That's $29 and euros at the time of filming. As you can see, they look actually really good. It's just a matter of choosing the one that suits what you're doing. I'm gonna stick with this one for the rest of the video as I like this one. A little bonus tip for using flat lays and on some of them you can see with the original photo that was used, there is a definite direction of the light because you can see there's shadow areas, lighter areas. So I'm going to align that with my key light and this helps to sell the look just that little bit more. At this point, I also noticed that the color temperature looked a little cool. So I did a custom white balance and I think it looked much better once I did that. Tip Tip two is to stop your lens way down. And I know it's nice to film with a nice wide aperture to get, you know, nice subject separation and melty background blur. But this is one situation where I would urge you to do the opposite and stop your lens down to at least f8. Personally, I prefer f11 to f16. Tip three, I just mentioned stopping our lenses down, but you know, we still want the subject to be super detailed and, you know, the sharpest thing in the frame. And to achieve this, I'm going to set my focus point using manual focus above the surface. So I'm going to temporarily open our aperture, zoom in and focus on where the subject is going to be. Don't worry about your background being out of focus, you know, the surface, because obviously once we stop back down, this is going to be in focus again. And what this means is we can pick up the item and it will still be within that depth of field, within that plane of focus, and you know, it's still gonna look sharp. Tip four is to use plenty of power from whatever lights you have. As we're stopping down, you'll likely need every scrap of power your lights can give, unless you're rocking a few Aperture 1200Ds. Again, this is the same theory as when you're shooting macro. And when I shoot macro, I've got my key light, my Aperture 600D on full power so that I can stop down even more. There's another reason for maxing out the power of your lights too, which is tip five, to use more layers of diffusion in front of your lights. The reason I say this is because the more layers of diffusion you want to use, the higher power you're gonna need from your lights. And bear in mind, we've already stopped down. So we've got some making up to do to reach our desired exposure. 
less diffused, more direct light will cast harder shadows. And honestly, that's probably gonna look a bit weird. It's a preference, of course, and I prefer the softest shadows possible from my top-down shots. Tip six is to use normal or standard focal lengths. And the reason I say this is because for me, longer focal lengths just mean your camera has to be even further away. So it, it could be just a little on the impractical side. And then wide angles just, I think, look a bit weird for this kind of shot. I, I just don't want to have to deal with distortion of any kind. And um, that's, you know, that's what wide angles often give you. So personally, I think the sweet spot is around 35 millimeters full frame. That for me gives me a really natural looking shot as if I'm looking over the surface. A nice little bonus tip here is to use something like a, a standard zoom, a 24 to 70. That way, you know, you, you don't need to worry about needing huge wide open apertures that prime lenses give you because we're gonna be stopping down anyway. And you know, if you need to change the field of view, you can just do that on the lens without disturbing your whole rig. Tip seven, and you don't need a true boom arm style top down rig. I do, I do have one. Uh, it's a little dusty. That shows you how infrequently I actually use this. I know they do have some advantages. For one, if you have the space, you can set it up on the other side of your surface, and that just gives you a lot more space to work with. It also can give you that true top-down angle, but that's not my preference. As I mentioned, I use a tripod and I set it fairly high. This gives us a slight angle so that it's not a true top-down shot, but I quite like that it looks like you're stood over the surface looking at the items yourself. So I say use the gear you have, don't worry too much about getting this kind of thing straight away, unless this is this is your game, unless this, this is all you do and you know you're gonna have a camera permanently there, because to be honest, this can be kind of finicky to, you know, to, to rig up and, and take down. You know, if you say you have one main camera that you like to use, and you use it on a tripod like I've got now, and this kind of thing, that's kind of annoying. So. Um, yeah, use the gear that you have. Finally, tip eight, and this is something I hadn't previously considered, and I hope you're the same. I now rig up a close mic to capture ASMR style audio for my top-down shots. This adds an extra dimension for the viewer. When I think about what you're gonna be filming top-down, I think of things like unboxings and you know product demos and, and that kind of thing. And having some really high quality audio to go along with it really kind of levels up the feel of these shots. I like the internal XY mics on my Tascam Porter Capture X8 but almost any mic will do. Let me show you a with and without and you can just decide if you like it or not. And here we are, we've got our microphone set up and I thought I'd just, you know, toggle a few of the controls on this guitar and um, that gives you a few nice clicks and that kind of thing. I also gave the body a bit of a knock because it's a chambered guitar. Basically, it's had some wood removed from the middle to make it lighter. I don't know about you, but I, I just love this. It gives such a nice extra dimension to these videos. And then switching it off and I miss it. I don't know about you. Hopefully you could hear it over my voice. And there we go. Anyway, now it's time to take everything we've learned in this video, grind it up and make a tasty espresso for you to take away. Firstly, and kind of obviously, an interesting surface really just makes a big difference with these kind of shots. You can either just go around and find some wherever you are, or there's flat lays that you could buy. Stop down for more depth of field. For me, this is essential. I like having lots of depth of field for these shots. Use manual focus to make sure the subject is looking detailed. I'm gonna to use tons of power for my lights. Obviously I need it because I've stopped my lens down. And I'm using lots of diffusion, which means I need even more power. I recommend standard focal lengths for the most natural look, somewhere between, you know, 30 to 50 millimeter full frame. You don't necessarily need a special top-down rig, just your tripod can do a really nice job. Finally, adding an ASMR audio track gives an extra dimension to your top-down videos. I love this, I'm gonna keep doing it. I know it adds extra effort, but I like going the extra mile. Anyway, that's how I went from this very standard looking shot to this, I'm sure you'll agree, much improved version. I'm aware that most of these points that I've made are a matter of preference, and I'm really curious to know what you would do differently. Also, what did I miss? 
please load up the comments section below and let's make it an, a, an awesome treasure trove of tips. Uh, and that way we can all just learn together. And um, after all, this channel has always been about learning and sharing. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I've filmed hundreds of videos about video and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one beneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.